Now, let's go take a look at the at this guy. So at my tugboat. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Space Engineers in the NID whitelist server. And as you can see, <laughs> I am um, I'm 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 in my imaginary putt putt car. Put 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 put. Put 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 put. <laughs> this is a a bug that uh, has happened, ooh, for a little while. It's also it puts us down on the bottom. I'm not centered anymore, which is strange. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm 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 flying around like I am seated in a cockpit. <laughs> so uh, that's that's a fun bug. Uh, I haven't actually seen it before on myself like this. I've only ever seen other people, but not. But look at that. Look at my arms out too. Look. I'm holding my uh, my handlebars there too. I'm in a I'm, in, I'm on a Harley motorcycle. <laughs> this is too funny. Um, but yeah, so uh, welcome back. I haven't done a whole lot on this server since the last time you saw me. Been a bunch of stuff happening, and uh, life has been the busy. But I have done a little bit of research and figuring, and uh, there is. Uh, this is the day after the, well, it's, for me, it's the night of the update. And uh, they released a, a fix, or not a fix, I guess, but an enhancement to the inventory uh, volume and stuff in the latest patch, which, is, which was really good for servers like this one, where we had 10 times, this is a 10 times server. And so now they've scaled the, um, uh, the volume, the weight, the weight calculation based on the, the the size of your inventory for your world, right? So there's ten times and three times, and I can't remember what they all are. But yeah, so they they divide the the weight uh, by the scale of your of your uh, world setting. So that's that should be that this thing should actually fly a lot better now, right? Like, oh yeah, look at it go! Like it was. It, so yeah, so it won't be, it'll still, obviously you still have to be careful about the weight, but it won't be as crazy on a server like this that had the 10 times problem or the 10 times scale, right? Which is a feature of the game. So I'm glad they did that because that makes, um, that makes that uh, a usable feature again, right? And our wonderful TARDIS down there. I love that thing. Um, so I've done a few things here because I want to kind of show you guys something that I've discovered. Um, uh, but before you do that, I, I guess I should say, um, in, in a comment on the last episode, uh, Redstone Wan uh, made another suggestion about gathering ore, uh, which is that you can use a spherical gravity generator, actually, to, you know, like, place that around where you're mining. And then all of the ore should just, like, you know, come in from all directions. You could probably do some really cool stuff with that. I thought that was a really neat idea, and I might want to play with that at some point, too. Um, also, Elemental Blaze 79... Um, he made a comment that I didn't know, that I, I, I didn't realize, and you know, it's just something that I've just never looked into, but that uh, the, the, the weight of, of ore is heavier than the weight of ingots. And now it never was really a problem before. Oh yeah, and they, this is new now too, right? Uh -huh. they, they updated the model, so this is all nice and pretty now. Can't really see all of it, but yeah, that's, that's a new updated cockpit model. I think it's kind of pretty. Um, Looks a little better. I like I like how like everything is scratched up and old and all that kind of stuff. Can't have nice things um, in space. Everything will get scratched up. <laughs> um, but yeah, you're saying that ore weighs more than ingots. So when it comes to a ship that you're carrying stuff around with you, it makes much more sense to carry ingots around. And if you're building a um, like a mining ship, right? Now in small ship you can't do it, but uh, but it, you know the suggestion was to make large mining ships that has that have refineries in them so that as you mine it turns your ore into ingots right away and actually would be less weight which would be good for the kind of ship that i want to build right my large ship that i want to build uh because it was supposed to be a full-on mining ship right that that uh, also processed everything as it goes so that's actually really cool that that ingots weigh less so if you're refining them as you go then that will actually be really helpful um, he also made a, a comment too about the, 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 he made a previous comment earlier about ma having like a disassembly area for this base. Um, maybe over there on the other side. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it over there just because, uh, like 
that would be a long way to run um, cables and stuff. Although, I guess I've already got it kind of running. I don't know. Maybe it will. But mining out that side of the asteroid might take some time, too. Um, but also, the, the purpose of it, though, would be... So, like, when people drop off all their stuff and it all gets refined and everything, um, ultimately, there, there might be leftovers, right? So, it would be nice if... And I... I don't... Do I still have a spot? Maybe over here? I could probably figure out a way to get it in there, like on the side, or maybe on the... I can't remember if I used the bottom. Maybe in the bottom. Um, but to allow it... So when the system uh, m creates everything that you need, and then you weld up the ship you're going to weld, right? And whatever is left over, you could flip a switch, and everything that's left in the system would get pulled back through out of this... Uh, sucked back out into a disassembling set of assemblers, right? Maybe another set of disassemblers that would then, or maybe we can even switch all of these guys to be disassemblers through a programmable block or something like that, right? Reuse the same guys and then drop all of the ore back in, like it just as refined ore again, like disassemble the components, put all of the, or not ore, the um, ingots back into this, uh, this, and then allow the ingots to be pulled maybe back out through the front again back into the ship. Uh, there might be need to be, again, I might need to run another line or maybe you have to move your ship to the other side over here to pick them up and go. <laughs> I don't know. But but that I think that would be really useful. So if people come in, they drop off all their stuff, um, it builds everything you need, then you build your ship and then whatever's left over gets turned back into raw ore through disassembling um, and then you take it away with you, right? Maybe even into the ship that you just built. Huh? Maybe something like that. That's kind of cool. Um, uh, and also on along the lines of, uh, so Elemental Blaze, uh, I, I think I shared a link in the last episode where he had a, a collector ship. So he has like a little mining, so even if you had a little mining ship like this that was collecting ore, and then you had a an ore collecting ship that was like situated behind it, that you could dock this with as well. And maybe in that ore collecting ship is where you do your, um, your turning into ingots and all that kind of stuff, right? So, so you'd have like a little waypoint ship that's right there with this guy. And then this guy could dock with it as well or whatever, right? So when you go from asteroid to asteroid, you dock with the collector ship. Um, it would pull everything out. You'd go to another asteroid, you'd, you know, mine and do that. That might be an interesting way too to, to solve some of the engineering problems with the weight, right? So I really like all those ideas. Thank you so much um, for all those comments. But what I found, so I, I've got a little setup here. You see what I got here, right? I got a little programmable block. I got buttons and I've got an LCD monitor. And I also threw a um, projector. That's what that is, a projector here. And I've spent a bunch of time offline designing my tugboat. So I'm gonna show you guys the tugboat. Um, we're gonna project it out of here, but I'm also gonna show you a script that I found in my internet travels. Um, so first and foremost, if I go into the programmable block here, and let's edit this. This I didn't write this script. I, I found this script online. Um, and if I bring up, how do I uh, browse the workshop? Um, it's this one here, this blueprint, blueprints components, uh, which if I go browse, does this actually show it to me? Uh, no. So let's see if I can just pull this up in here. Where's the search? Uh, blueprints components. Does it find it? Blueprints components, here it is. So this is the script, so that you guys know which one I'm, I'm looking at here. Uh, it is called Blu Blueprints Components, and it is by, uh, where is the name of the person? Right up here. Uh, I can't pronounce that, so there you go. <laughs> it's by it's in his workshop, um, and it's got there's a, there's a really nice description of what it is, and uh, what, there's some some things you need to set, you know, uh, some some variables that you should you should set, uh, and then a, a nice description of how it works. Now, basically, what this script does, if I get out of here, um, and I've set I've already set the compo I've already set my variables in here. Uh, basically what it does is you tell it the name of an LCD. Um, you can tell it to, to output to an LCD. So you tell it the name of the LCD block, right? So I've got it, 
I've got the script pointing to this LCD and I've got um, this button hooked up to my projector down here. So if I flip this on, I've already got my tugboat. So I flip that on, you'll see that there's a projection down there now, which we'll go look at in a minute. But that's my tugboat. And if I go over to this button, this button's just gonna run that script. And look at this. So it tells me everything I need to build that projection. So this is gonna come in really handy um, for like if somebody shows up, right? They drop their ship off, they set up their projection and then they can hit a button and it says, this is what you need to have in the, oop, I just whacked that, uh, in this this uh, cargo chest here, right? So this guy here, oop, uh, there's a bunch of stuff in it right now, but um, it'll tell you what you need uh, to build your ship. Right, so it tells you how many, like how many of, of each of the components you need, right? And it does actually have um, in the variables in this script, it actually has, so, so and it's actually really nicely commented in here as well. So you don't even need to like, once you've loaded it up, um, all of the, what you need to, like the basics of what you need in here is all right in here. So it just it tells you exactly what you need, right? So the name of the projector that it's looking at, um, you have to tell it if it needs heavy armor or not, right? There's a, there's a reason for that. You can read about it in the description. Um, uh, if it has any interior walls, again, there's a reason for that. Uh, maybe the script, like as the, as the API gets better, maybe they can make the script better stuff too, right? Uh, so, but this is also one of the really cool things about the script. It, uh, the script will transfer components to, uh, to any cargo, uh, cargo containers, which contain the words, right? So you can actually tell it like, uh, the keywords it's looking for for a container and you can tell it to actually transfer the components, right? Um, I, I don't think I'll need this because of my sorting system. It should all just be in uh, in the in the thing that we need. Uh, but it also has, you know, like here, uh, should, should you show it on the LCD and what's the name of the projector or the LCD panel? And it also um, stack components, right? It tells you uh, the script will take into account the components that are already present in the cargo container. So I probably should, if I put DST on there, uh, on my else or on my cargo. So if I go uh, components, so if I click on this guy, I wonder if I just put uh, DST on there and then What's the programmable block? And recompile that script. I don't know if I need to do that. And if I hit this button again, uh, so like it should maybe minus, minus the stuff, right? So if I, let's just clear this out to make sure it's actually doing something. Uh, oh, and, and then I, I'm, since I'm in here, uh, programmable, uh, block. I always do this just to make sure. Run it. It looks like it's the same numbers. So maybe there's something I can, like, maybe I need, I need to do something else. But it looks like it's supposed to actually, you know, if you've already got stuff in your containers, maybe it's already doing it. I don't know. Um, it should remove or minus what you need, right? So, or it, at, the, at the very worst, it shows you exactly what you need to have in that container. Um, but it also should show you, you know, what, uh, what you're missing instead, right? And I'm just, I'm sure I just did something wrong on that setup. Um, I'm, I'm going too quick, going too quick. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, that I think is super useful. And this also has, um, like, I wonder if I could use, I, I could look at that script, see how it's working so that I could get these numbers uh, programmatically. Um, and then I wonder if there's, I don't, I don't know if this is possible, but I'm going to look into it to see if I can actually queue up the, the assemblers to build that stuff automatically for you as well. I did see a script that did that, but um, I might be able to, to write that if the assemblers have that ability. I don't even know if they do. I don't know if you can programmatically, or at least in like in game script, if you can programmatically queue up stuff in these. I, last time I checked, I don't think you could because I did look into that before. Um, so maybe they've added some APIs for it now, but either way, when they add that ability, can definitely do that obviously the another the other option too would be to write a full-on um like source code mod i don't have the time for that uh at the moment so 
it, right now I'm, I'm kind of limited. I'm limiting myself to just in-game scripts to see how that works. Now, let's go take a look at the at this guy. So at my tugboat, it's big, but uh, you'll see the reason it's big is so I made it a large ship because I wanted to have these big large thrusters. I wanted to make sure that it had enough power to kind of pull a large ship through. Um, so basically, here's the here's the basic design. It's got uh, three sets of, of these thrusters on each side. So there's four complete sets, right? And uh, and these so these are just arms out to the side so that the thrusters are kind of away from what we're what we're kind of pulling. And I, I think it looks kind of cool. Um, and then on the back side, right, it's basically just got uh, the basic thrusters pushing in each direction because this this ship isn't like. It's not meant to be a fast moving ship. It's meant basically to be just a tugboat, purely a tugboat. It's not gonna move fast, it's not gonna do a lot. Um, and then, but it's also a large ship. Uh, this this is just, I've got these are temporary blocks here for being touched to this guy, right? So that it can be built. Um, and there's an interior to this ship as well. So uh, right here, you'll see that there is, like there's a little bit of a platform to walk on here. And then you can walk, uh, then you would open this up and there's an airlock in here, right? So that you can, and then all the, there's some gyros up there. There's an airlock in here. So that, cause this is oxygenated inside. And if we go through here, you'll see I've got a little ramp and it's kind of hard to see with the, with the projection, but there's a ramp that goes up to a cockpit here and a nice big glass cockpit. Um, this was, I was inspired uh, by one of uh, the commenters as well. One of you guys, I, uh, I wish I could remember the name off the top of my head right now. Um, it's probably Elemental Blaze. Uh, put the name down below in case I got that wrong. But um, uh, the kind of a, a nice big glass cockpit. I like that. Um, and then a little rampy kind of dealy up here and access to a cargo container behind you. Uh, there's oxygen up here as well as the vent, right? So you can stay nice and cozy and comfy in here while you do your work. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. Obviously, you'll take your helmet off so that you can use the oxygen. Um, and then underneath here was there's a gravity generator, so you can actually walk around in here. Um, and then there's a conveyor system in the middle here that, that goes up, down, and to the sides because if we go back out to the ship, uh, this guy is running off of uh, right here. You'll see there is um, large reactors, and I put four of them on here. There's one on each one on the bottom top left and right just because again i wanted to make sure that this guy had um power enough more than enough power to 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 run the whole ship and uh to pull whatever it needed to pull as well as enough thrusters to do that now the reason i kind of went with this design where it's kind of looks like this um i don't know octopusy uh style design is because let's say I built this, I get it into the world and I try to use it and it's not strong enough. Like I did, I'd actually test this out a little bit in uh, creative world and it worked, it actually worked quite well, but um, I've discovered that in a creative and then in survival, uh, especially in a multi-world survival, things don't always turn out um, and work the way you, you wanted them to. So I've built this with a, with the idea that if I need more thrusters, I can easily add them, right? So. I would just grind down right here and throw on another thruster, one on each of the top, bottom, left, and all the way around. Um, so then I could have four on each of these, right? Or five or six, or however many I needed, I could just keep going out. Now, I don't imagine I'll need much more than this. If I needed another one, maybe you have to go up to four. But that's kind of why I designed it this way. I think it's, I think it'll work really well. Um, the other thing that I've done here is you'll see that there's this kind of like, um, this, this piece sticking out. I don't know what to call it. Like, a protrusion coming out the front um, with the projector block right here, right? So this is actually where I would project the ship off of that I wanted to build. And then I would line this guy up with the projector block, uh, where it is, here it is, <laughs> lost it, uh, with the center of this of this here grid, right? And one of the, once I get that built, and we can use it in this world. I'm going to test out the sensors as well. Like there was that wonderful suggestion as well about putting sensors uh, to detect how big how big it is um, and turn on the appropriate welders. And we'll test out to see if it works with the projection. I'm not sure if it does or not. Um, but yeah, so you'd line it up right here with this guy, turn it on, get everything ready to go, and then you'd back it away, pulling the projection through, building the ship. 
So I think that will, I think this will be a really good tugboat. I think it'll work great. And I, I like, I think the, the look of it is cool too. Now you'll see that like it is controllable by a person because in the beginning days, I'm definitely going to want a person to be able to control this. Um, maybe, maybe that's just how people would prefer to do it too. Maybe they want to be able to control it. Um, but there's also going to be a remote control block in this ship as well so that uh, when if we get the automation stuff working ultimately uh, with the GPS and all that and all that jazz, then it can be automated as well. So I'm pretty excited about that. I think I really like. I spent some time working on this, um, and I, I really like how it turned out. Uh, the downside to this script that uh, um Energy oh uh, where is. Uh, this guy has oxygen and energy, so let's just jump in here. But yeah, so the downside to the script um, that we have over there is that it, it obviously has to know about the projection block, right? And the way that we've designed this, um, uh, the way that we've designed the system is that the projection block is actually on the tugboat, right? So I don't think there's a way that I could have the station script know about the projection block on this ship. The only thing that comes to mind, and I'll have to test this out, and if you guys know, let me know, but the only thing that comes to mind is maybe a laser antenna. If I have this ship connected to the station via a laser antenna, I think they kind of become a, like you can access everything, right? Like, like when you connect with a connector or a merge block, right? I have to try that out, but that would be a really interesting way if I had a, um, if that worked, right? And I have like a laser antenna on here that connects to the station, um, allowing the script to access the projector on this instead of the projector like on a station, right? If I can't get it to work, then the alternative is to just put a projector on here as well, uh, load, load up the, um, the projection on the one on the station and load up the one on here do them both right and that way at least then you could get the the components you needed um and if we automate that as well then we would have the list of components here and i could hide away that projection somewhere maybe even inside of the asteroid so you don't even see it right if i have to do it that way but i, I think that that this is a pretty cool idea i like how this is turning out um so i think i'm hoping maybe in the next episode i'll be ready to build this ship so what i'm going to do is retrofit the crane here um, probably put a few more thrusters, just like this one here, facing this way. A couple more thrusters, but I think that this crane should be able to build this tugboat, and then the tugboat that can can then build the even bigger ships that we want to build through here. And I'm gonna have to take some time redesigning the the large ship uh, that I want to build in here, and and hopefully that won't take too long. But um, but yeah, so I, I kind of want to. In the next episode, I'm going to I'm going to make sure I'm going to use this script I, so now I know exactly what I need. I'm going to load this uh, this guy up with all the components it needs to build that tugboat and then we will actually try and pull it through this grid and try it out and see if it actually can build that ship. And I did do it like I said I, I ran it through a trial, a trial in a creative offline version of this world using that crane and this projection and it worked. There was a few little weird issues um, that we'll see if it happens in multiplayer survival or if we get different issues, uh, but we'll see. But it'll be all for good learning anyway. But yeah, so this will be a bit of a shorter episode. Um, but yeah, I thought this was all pretty cool. Uh, and these guys, like, the, I love the, the change they made for the, for the, um, uh, the inventory so that that actually works better with the game features. Uh, so yes, this is coming along. I'm pretty happy about this. I hope you guys enjoyed. We're going to end it here. Um, so I can get ready to do that in the next episode. One of the other things that I also have to do in here is actually start finishing this off. But I don't want to do more work in here and finishing this all off um, and doing all the work in here until we know that this guy works. We've got this to a point now. It's all hooked up. It can do all of the work. Let's make sure that the function is there. Once we know it can function, when I build that tugboat, we will know this thing works. And once we know it works, then we can make this base, we can finish this base off, add oxygen in here, add the, the windows and the all the automation, right? It'll be super cool. So I hope you guys enjoyed. 
I, if you if you did enjoy, please leave me a like. It's how I know that you want me to do more. It's also how other people can find me because it helps in my YouTube, um, in the search results for YouTube. Uh, also, if you haven't subscribed and you like what you see here, uh, you know, definitely give me a subscribe and you'll be notified when I do more stuff here and more stuff in all of the other things that I do. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate all of your comments and all of your love. And I will talk to you next time. Bye.